Okay, uh, welcome back to another video in regards to planning and building approvals. This time, the video I'll be producing is in regards to um, fire resistance levels, um, ostensibly for Project 2. However, the same, same um, paths can be applied to, to any type of building. Our, and I'll just walk you through the steps quickly in, in order to determine what fire resistance levels we require for various different aspects of the construction, that be that walls, floors, ceilings, etc. Um, walls, internal, external. We start by determining what is the classification of the building. Now, all of you should be quite familiar with that by now. Um, um, so I won't I won't go into that significantly, but we start by determining what the classification of our building is. So for so for project two, um, we have a a multi uh, residential building. So we'll, we'll go into this classification of building structures and determine what classification of building that is. Once we know that classification of building, we head to this area part C point. C1 uh, for fire resistance and stability. So I'll click on that straight away. And now that we know what the classification of our building is, we can refer to this table, table C1.1, type of construction required. And we go rise in stories um, and we count the rise in our, our stories. So for project two, uh, we'll classify that as, as two stories because we have car parking facilities underneath, which are a fire source feature so so we'll classify that as as, as two stories and then um, we'll get our you know got our got our class well our class two for that that um, that project two building there so we come to type B construction however this the, the process is this, is the same for for any any form of form of building um, by looking at the rise in stories and the classification of the building, and then we um, gain our type of construction. Now, what does that matter? Well, that that matters in in regards to well, it certainly matters in regards to um, several aspects in regards to fire safety. But one of them is for determining what those fire resistance levels are, and to determine that. Um, we go to this section here. So each building element must comply with specification C 1.1. Now that's that is different from so we have C 1.1 type of construction required. So that's that's part C 1.1. However, we also have an area called specification C 1.1. So we'll click on that and go to specification C 1.1 um, fire resisting construction. Now I encourage you to have a good read through this section under the under the general requirements. However, for the purposes of this video, I'll keep us moving moving forward. We won't won't dwell on these aspects too much, but but by all means have have a good look through there. Is, be aware of the aspects that it covers, such as balconies, verandas, mezzanine floors, etc. Um, but what I did want to bring your attention to is. As we pass through specification C 1.1, we then get to our different types of fire resisting construction. So we have type A fire resisting construction. Keep moving down, scrolling through. We'll get to type B fire resisting construction, etc. So working our way through and working our way through type B fire resisting construction there, we come to this, this table. So, so this table um, gives us um, the fire resistance levels for various different built components. Also, um, these numbers, if you don't know already, you, you should should know, but if but if and if you don't, I'll give you a quick rundown of what they are. That first 90 is for structural adequacy, the second 90 is for integrity, and the third 90 is for insulation. All, all of these are expressed in minutes, so 90 minutes, that's one and a half hours. So for one and a half hours under the conditions of a fire, that wall has to maintain its structural adequacy, i.e. it has to keep holding up 
any of the, the loads that it's bearing, it has to maintain its integrity. So its integrity means no, there are no holes in the wall, so the hole can't be breached by fire. Fire can't make its way through a gap. And the final 90 or hour and a half is for insulation. So only a certain amount of heat from, from the um, side that's experiencing the fire is allowed to be transmitted to the side that is to be shielded. So it has to maintain its adequacy, its integrity and its insulation for those 90 minutes. So there are various different uh, manufacturers, particularly of, of linings, but also um, manufacturers such as Hebel, which design walling systems using their products to achieve all of these various different levels, be it an hour and a half, two hours, um, two and a half hours, three hours duration. So we can go through this table and we can look for look at you know load bearing walls you know less than 1.5 meters from a fire source feature, um, etc. And work our way through. One thing of particular note is that a fire source feature is either another building or it's the boundary of the allotment. The reason the boundary of the allotment is regarded as a fire source feature is because we don't control what gets built on the other side of that fence. So currently it may be an empty paddock or, or a backyard or so with, with no building close by, but who's to say that there's not going to be another building built there in the future? So we always have to regard the distance from the boundary as the distance from a fire source feature. Okay, um, I'll just pause this just for a sec. Okay, so that's our table for our for our walls and other other built elements. Um, as you work through here, you you may get to the point where you say, okay, what about our, our floor because as, as you as you work through here you think how are we going to um, we don't have any specification for our floor that separates us from the car park that is included in this clause here um, so in, in class two or three building except we're uh, within one sole occupancy unit etc etc um, above a space for the accommodation of motor vehicles or used for storage or any other ancillary purpose must be constructed so that it is least of the standard achieved by a floor slash ceiling system incorporating a ceiling have an FRL of at least 30 30 30 or have a fire protective covering to the underside of the floor including beams incorporated in it if the floor is combustible or of metal um, and then we'll, and this relates to 9c buildings so we have to have an FRL of at least 30, 30, 30, or non-combustible protective covering to the underside of any, any flooring structure that's deemed combustible. So that's um, fire resistance construction in a, in a nutshell. Please read through the various sections and, and work your way through that, that process of building classification and, and building construction. And all the best uh, continuing on with Project 2. Thank you.